Well, hello. Giddy up. We're going to have us a Galdar Rodeo. <laughs> so my pen rodeos are videos where I compare different pens. And I want to get this out of the way now for everybody who wants to comment down below. Um, I don't think it's fair for you to compare a Lamy 2000 to a Jinhao 80 because they're totally different pens. I know. The idea behind a rodeo is not which one's better than the other. The idea behind a rodeo is to get a look at two different pens and see what they're like. And what are their similarities? What are their differences? So, uh, yes, we're going to look at the Jinhao 80. And uh, I'm embarrassed to say that during my original video talking about that pen, I made the joke, Lamy 80 at the beginning, and then I'm like, oh, no, really, it's a Jinhao 80. I knew that. And then I proceeded to call a Lamy 80 through the rest of the video. <laughs> so, because of that, I'm including the Lamy 80, which is a vintage pen, in this video. So we're going to take a look at all three, and we're going to have some wacky fun. There is no structure to this thing at all. This is, this is not a real rodeo. This is uh, the Wild Wild West in this one. So giddy up and saddle your horses. Giddy up. So here we have microphone on its head there we go here we have the Jinhao 80 now you might be thinking looks very Lamy 2000 like and I agree with you so here is my Lamy 2000 that I use every day at work I carry it with me everywhere and just in the interests of truth here's the other Jinhao 80 that I have it was cheaper to buy two than to buy just one and let's round it out, because I don't own just one Lamy 2000. I own more than one. So here's one. This has a double broad nib, and it's uh, barely been used. I think I've inked it once or twice since I bought it. So this kind of gives you the newer appearance. This is the more worn out, you know, used daily appearance. And because several people mentioned it, I also inked up. Whoops. My Lamy 80. So, first of all, the Lamy 2000s and the Lamy 80 are piston fillers. The two Jinhao 80s are not piston fillers. Second thing, the clip design. I think they're all spring loaded. That's the Jinhao, or sorry, the Lamy 80. Here's the Lamy 2000 and the Jinhao 80. I think they're all spring loaded cl 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 clips. Uh, they all have the same doodad on the finial. So does the Lamy 80, just trust me. But here's a difference. So we're going to look. Okay, let's see how I can do this. Let's zoom. We'll do some zoomage. All right, that's as good as we get. So this is the a look at the texture of the Jinhao 80. Got to keep it down here. Um, I have heard it said it's Macrolon. I have come to the decision that it is not. It is a brushed plastic. It definitely has Macrolon-like texture, but it is not Macrolon. What is it? Don't know, but I... I've read enough different websites. I'm pretty sure it's not Macrolon. Uh, this is worn Macrolon on my Lamy 2000 fine point. And this is relatively new Macrolon on my double broad Lamy 2000. And yeah, you, the piston turning knob is very well concealed. It's there. But uh, this pen is machine so precisely it's almost invisible and then we have the Lamy 80 I'm really not sure what it's made out of but it's a little bit different beast it is a piston con piston filler has this cap band you know, the clip shares a lot with the Lamy 2000 but it is not the same and it has an L up here which I think the older models of the Lamy 2000 did so, 
let's open them up. Let's take a look here. So oop, we got a little condensation around there, so we'll just wipe that off. Uh, one thing I don't care for with the Lamy 2000, sometimes it gets condensation. So let's just move the whole picture down. So we're looking at nibs, fine point nib, semi-hooded, and it's gold. Here is the Jinhao 80. Not hooded. Also, we've got a trim ring here and not a metal section. The cap hooks over that somehow. I'm not 100% sure how that works. Whereas on the Lamy 2000, it's got these somewhat controversial ears that it hooks over. So just for completeness, we'll move it over here so it's in the picture. The Lamy 80 is also a... Um, not a hooded nib or semi-hooded, but different nib. And the Lamy 80 is a gold nib. So two gold nibs, this one is steel. If we look at the back, we look at the feed. I'm actually seeing, you know, here's a hole here, just like the hole here. This, yeah, maybe that's the hole. This looks... Like, I need to pull out another pen. So I had a Lamy Safari get stolen at school. It was, you know, coral colored, bright pink. But I have a Lamy um, All-Star. Huh. So I'm a bit curious about doing some nib swapping here. I am not going to ink up this Lamy Safari. This rodeo has gotten big enough. But anyway, we're going to write with a wide selection of pens here tonight. I don't think my double broad is inked up. Oh, it is. Never mind. <laughs> all right. All of these are inked up. <laughs> Most of these are inked up with Omas Black. A cup, one of them is inked up with Parker Quink Washable Blue. So it wouldn't be a Waski Squirrel video if it didn't use Parker Quink Washable Blue. So let's toss this puppy aside and get out a little rodeo notebook. I said this isn't going to be a standard review or standard rodeo. You know, don't look for any kind of structure to this. We're going to be all over the place. I'm not even sure what I'm going to do. So dial down the exposure. Because it's a mic too bright. And i got to move the microphone if I'm going to do this. Alrighty. So let's start with uh, what it, the pen that inspired all this. I, I'm going to start with this black one. Huh, which I thought had black ink in it. So never mind. I'm going to start with this one that looks like the Lobby 2000. Oh, it is a Lamy 2000. God bless this whole video. All right, here we go. Third time's the charm, right? Ooh, we're going to have to dial up some exposure. Jin Hao 80. All right, so that whole idea is not working. So it's a Jin Hao 80. I bought the fine point nib. And in all these pens, we're going to have Omas Black. And we're just going to do a couple swirls and curly cues to compare. So no, whoops, you didn't see that. No real line variation. No real line variation of any kind. Now we're going to bring out the Lamy 2000 Fine Point. Okay, so this is the Lamy 2000. Also with Omas Black, because I want you to see a writing sample. So definitely not as fine as the Jin House. So maybe I should have inked up. Oops, you can't see that. How about now? Um, so maybe I should have inked up my extra fine, but it is what it is. 
So I've always said that they're slightly like a cursive italic. It's more pronounced in the, the broader ones, but I, I think it's part of that sweet spot that Lamy nibs have. And then, although it's a different beast, we're going to do the Lamy 80, which has a double broad nib, also with Omas Black. And some curly cues, that thing, yeah, stub thing definitely stands out there. And we'll do this oblique thing. And to wrap this up, I didn't leave myself enough room, but we'll squeeze it in. We're going to do the Lamy 2000. Double broad. This has Omas black ink in it. We're just going to do two curly cues so it all fits. So again, you have that stub-like character to it. So that's fun. You may be thinking to yourself, there was another Jittenhow 80 that wrote in this blue here. But let's just take a minute. You know, Lamy 2000, a little broader. Also more line variation. These two, they're close. I don't know. I, I, I think the Lamy 80 is slightly broader than the Lamy 2000. Um, I was actually disappointed by the Lamy 2000 double broad that it wasn't a little bit broader. But I want to look at the one that's writing in blue. And that nib should pull off. Where's my puller? So years ago, Chris Rap 52 sent me some rubber bands like this that were for lobster claws. Well, I live in rural North Dakota and not, not the part that has many people in it. So where am I going to find that? But I was cooking because I cook a lot rather than buy or rather than buy you know prepared food and I bought two leeks and they were banded together with this so you know it's bigger but what the hey the point of it is to get a grip another thing that works is that uh, cabinet liner stuff so it just the nib just pulls off it's friction fit you can do this on your um, Lamy Safari as well and Lamy sells the nibs. And, uh, oops. You don't see what's going on behind the scenes here. Just be glad. So we got, I bought years ago a, a selection of nibs. So let's see what we got here. Oh, so that's a plump little guy. That one's pretty plump. Let's put on the, I want to see what this feed can do. So I'm going to put on this widest one. This looks like a 1.5 stub. Oh no, it's a 1.9 stub. So it just should just slide on there. And let's see, give it a second to for the ink to flow. So while we're talking, let's take this one that's writing in black. Let's pull off the nib that's on it Oop. so we're gonna pull off Arr. holy sugar okay now that's just getting ridiculous Arr. all right so I got all kinds of ink smeared all over this stupid rubber band and I can't get a flipping grip on the nib sugar Double sugar. Heck. And a few worse words than that. I quit. Okay. That experiment is not going to happen tonight. Uh, but I have, uh, let's see, an A nib I was going to try. Yep, that's the A. Uh, that's the children's nib. I've got a 1.1 stub. 
a medium. And a 1.5 stub. So I'm amazed by how easily this slipped on. So let's just see here. So we got the Lamy 80. Oh, we don't have ink in the nib yet. Let's just give it a little encouragement with some tissue. So I'm getting ink when I wipe that way. I want ink when I do this. There we go. Now we're starting to get ink out of the end. And this will be a good test to see if the feed in it can even keep up. So we're going to go Jin Hao. Oh, 80 with a Lamy 1.9 nib in it. That's impressive. Uh, this is Parker Quink, washable blue. And this is fun. So let's let's just go let's just go nuts with this. Yeah, see now I've turned that into a, kind of a fun pen. Like I might use this probably with a different ink for <laughs> Christmas cards and stuff. Um, let's ah what the heck? Let's do a Peer Gustafson test with it. You know, I didn't really expect it to pass that one. I thought it would have ink starvation long before then. So I'm impressed. It definitely makes it a more fun pen. So if I, <laughs> if the stupid leak rubber band wouldn't have gotten so slippery. Um, slips that in a way. Yes! Who's your squirrel? <laughs> oh, I'm going to get fired for this. All right, so let's put in... We're going to put in a fine, uh, the smallest nib I have here. Which I think was a medium, wasn't it? Medium or A. I'm going to keep the A nib off just because I may use it somewhere else. There it is, medium nib. Now, don't you let me forget that I did this nib swapping. Whoops. Oh, shoot. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Well, hopefully I don't roll my chair over it. Oh, there it is. Why did I buy the desk with slats in it? Because it was pretty. <laughs> Dumbass. Okay, so we'll slip this medium nib on here. Whoops, I missed. So, now we got the Lame, the Jinhao 80. Oh, we'll do it on this side. Jinhao 80. And this is a Lamy Fine. Again, we've got Omos Black. And I will say, I like it better this is a better feeling oh my <clears throat> so there's a stupid fly <laughs> a stupid fly i like to read in the morning so i get up early and read in bed i don't read so well at night because i just want to fall asleep but in the morning i like to get up and read and he was dive bombing me while i'm trying to read because i i think because i was using the a, a, a lit, not a Kindle, a no-name Kindle to read off of. I think he liked that. But he'll never like anything again. Alright, so Omas Black, do some swoopy doodles. And again, the, the, the Lamy Safari nib doesn't have a lot of line variation like the 2000 or the 80. And let's do another Pierre Gustafson test. And this one, angle's not going to be as important like it was with the 1.9 nib.
and I think it did very well. So if I keep those pens, I don't think I will bother with the Jin Hao nibs. So you got to see the Lamy 2000. I had uh, two different ones, so I wanted to show you the finish. I uh, got to see the Jin Hao 80, the Lamy 80, and uh, hopefully you got something out of that. Um, what's my favorite? Lamy 2000. I own multiples of that pen in several different nib sizes. Uh, the Lamy 2000 is just like the perfect pen for me. I can cap it and uncap it and bazinga, off we go. Um, Jin Hao 80, not actually a bad pen. Um, not mackerel on. Um, looks a lot like the Lamy 2000. A lot of people were saying it looks like the Lamy 80, but mm, maybe when you uncap it, but not when it's capped. Uh, and the Lamy 80, I enjoyed when I first got it because of that nib is just fascinating. I still enjoy the pen. Just for different reasons. You know, it's a good pen. Um, that double broad nib is a lot of fun. And dare I say this? More fun than the double broad on the Lamy 2000. <laughs> there, I said it. Okay, but anyway. Um, the other fun thing that came out of this was seeing... Because I didn't know this when I originally did my... Jin Hao 80 video. I didn't know you could swap nibs with the Lamy Safari. So that's a pretty sweet perk. Um, the Lamy Safari nib has been uh, designed and redesigned through many generations. So it is well engineered and uh, I like that it's kind of a universal design. And yeah, definitely picks the pen up a bit. Um, so with the Jin Hao, and, and I say this with a lot of the lower cost pens, here's a pen you can play with. Here's a pen, you know, might be actually a lot better if you swap out the nib and put something more expensive on it, which I did. Uh, if I was really into it, Lamy sells some gold nibs that would also fit it. Not going to do it. <laughs> uh, I used to own one back when I owned a Lamy Dialogue 3, but I no longer own that pen. But, uh... Yeah, there, there's a lot of options for this pen. Uh, now, at some point, you just got to ask, okay, but why not just get this other pen? Well, why not get a Lamy Safari? Maybe you don't like that triangular section. It doesn't bother me, but I don't like it. And I don't really like the looks of the Lamy Safari. So, uh, yeah, that might be an incentive for me to get a Jin Hao 80. I got one. Uh, also fun, I can get the Jin Hao 80 in several colors of plastic. I saw that Lamy 2000 came out with a green Macrolon, and I was like, oh baby, yes! And then I saw it was almost $600, and I said, oh baby, no, <laughs> I'm not paying that kind of money just for a, just for a different color Macrolon. So, yeah, I won't be buying the green one. And, of course, the Jin Hao wins on price just in general. So, anyway, I hope that was interesting. I hope it was useful. I hope you got a little bit of giddy-up on. So, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.